focus continues to be on Prime Minister's ambitious visit to the United States, where Prime Minister Narendra Modi has held separate bilateral talks with Nepal Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli and Crown Prince of Kuwait Sheikh Sabah Khalid Al Hamid Al Mubarak Al Sabah in New York. He also held bilateral talks with Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas and reiterated India's support for the early restoration of peace and stability in the region which is stripped by the conflict. Modi and Oli have also reviewed bilateral ties between India and Nepal. The talks between the two leaders focused on the issues such as energy, technology and trade. He also held separate talks with Kuwait Crown Prince Sabha Khalid al ahimd al Mubarak al Sabha and discussed how to add vigour to India-Kuwait ties in the sectors like pharma, food processing, technology, energy and more. Prime Minister Narendra Modi also conveyed that India attaches utmost importance to its bilateral ties with Kuwait and both are the leaders noted that the strong historical ties and people-to-people -people linkages. Moreover, Prime Minister Narendra Modi also expressed deep concern at the humanitarian situation which is prevalent in the Gaza Strip and reaffirmed that India's continued support to the Palestinian people. Not, uh, not just this, India also has long wait for the two-state resolution to the Israel-Palestine conflict. All right, viewers, now also let's take a closer look at this point of time when uh, we talk about the uh, meeting of Prime Minister Narendra Modi as far as it is concerned with the President of Palestine. You know, at this given point of time, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has met the Palestinian President, you know, and emphasized on the bilateral talks, in fact, which had to do a lot with also India being a mediator, in fact, for the two-state resolution. This meeting, this is very crucial to be taken uh, in the view of what has been happening in the conflict region, emphasized on two-state solution amid the conflict that has only been deepening at this point of time and also shared a, a touch of India's reaffirmation of how India actually plays as a key peacemaker at this given point of time where we also are talking about how India stand into uh, resolving the issues of conflicts in these regions where emphasizing humanitarian uh, need is the urgency. India, in fact, uh, also met the crown, uh, the crown of uh, Kuwait, crown prince of Kuwait and held the bilateral meeting by Prime Minister Narendra Modi, where this, this is in fact very strategic and very crucial because this is the first meeting between PM Modi and Prince of Kuwait, Crown Prince of Kuwait at this given point of time. So where the uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi addressed the UNGA also on the sidelines, this in fact also was very important that all the bilateral talks, whether it's Nepal or Prince of Kuwait or Palestinian President, is concerned that Prime Minister Narendra Modi in fact focused on matters that have to do with strengthening the regional and also the bordering situation as far as when we talk about the neighboring nations. One such being Nepal where Prime Minister Narendra Modi also focused on the matters of mutual interest to expand the ties between two nations whether it's of connectivity or also of uh, has to do with strengthening the economic relations and ties of the two nations. When we talk about India's nations with uh, Nepal, in fact, this is very important to see that India continues to lay focus on how the relationship between the neighboring nations of the country actually focuses to be. And it is important to understand that the people to people ties of all the neighboring nation continues to strengthen further. Also, viewers, it is also important to understand that at this given point of time, what India's point of this US visit actually benefits the country with immense uh, immense opportunities for the nation. You know, where in the address we have seen how Prime Minister Narendra Modi has focused on the technologi technological advancement, especially detailing that the use of semiconductors and artificial intelligence, where he also linked how AI to him means as American Indians, in fact, is going to play a very crucial narrative as far as there is more investment and there is more boost to the opportunity 
opportunity in the country from you know these nations are concerned which are in fact now on the verge of boosting these technology which are going to help India in fact strengthen the economic structure as well. Joining me at this point of time on the broadcast is Major General Sudhakar Ji. Well, I appreciate you joining us on the broadcast, sir. Thank you for speaking to NewsX. At this given point of time, you know, what is exactly your first thought of how uh, exactly India's, you know, push to the narrative of inducing more technological advancement is concerned, especially after, you know, there has been so much already talked about the bilateral ties, but PM Modi's visit to the US at this given point of time marking a very crucial message as the US presidential elections are just around the corner and making such comments on the subjects of technology, subjects of culturalism, subjects of also deepening the bilateral ties with the nations is concerned. How do you view this entire, you know, uh, entire visit in coherence at this point? Good afternoon, Simran. Thank you so much. <clears throat> I am so proud and uh, so glad that NewsX has caught me wherever I am. I am actually connected to NewsX from Jaisalmer, from one of the remotest of the places along the border area. And <clears throat> as regards the question which you have asked, in answer, all I would say, in the backdrop of the pandemic, Russo-Ukraine war, and the Hamas having launched or unpredictable, most most undesirable kind of a attack against the Israelis on 7th October, they have been majorly the uh, significant milestones and turning points in 21st century, if I may say. But apart from this, what stands out in the backdrop also has been the pager attack and the attack through the ICOM, which was unleashed a couple of days back by whoever, whether it was Mossad or whichever agency, against the Hezbollah. Now, here is the issue of technology. Here is the issue which is connected to the supply chain of the electronic components. Here is the issue which, uh, on which would rely the entire ambitious plan of Indian economy galloping at a significant pace and speed to achieve a status of 30 trillion US dollar economy by 2047 or earlier than that. That is the underlining, I would say, the central point of everything. I would compliment the Honorable Prime Minister of India, Mr. Narendra Modi, mm. for having touched those issues which are of vital national interest to India, keeping the national interest of India as central. He has gone around meeting the people. And also, given the very intent and the objective of India's growth story, and centering on the technology, the initiative of the critical technology, a document which was signed last year in the early part with the USA is not good enough. The good enough thing will sustain itself provided it is supported by a prevailing ecosystem which is vulnerable to disruptions the way it has taken place hmm. um, uh, two, three days back in Lebanon against the Hezbollahs. So therefore, what it brings to me is that self-reliance is a central motto which the present dispensation has actually taken it up in earnest with seriousness. In the self-reliance or make in India concept, we need to innovate and we need to focus on the issues of R&D, research and development. That is not the only issue because the research and development, mindful of the fact that we have only 0.65% of the GDP, one of the lowest in the world. If we are looking ahead towards 2047 and beyond, then the start point would be to focus on the research and development. Number two is creating an ecosystem within the country and mm. the ease of making business. The people will come from abroad. As on today, the FDI to India is comparatively one of the lowest that we have to actually see through, through a very fine comb and find out as to what is the main reason as to why people are not attracted. So we need to actually invite these people to come in into India to invest in a significant manner, particularly on the technology. And third and most important thing is that apart from the domestic consumption, mind you, today India has got one of the largest domestic consumption uh, uh, factor. We have about 500 million people who are expending more than $12 a day. That is the barometer at the international level. China has got 
almost about 700. This is going to jump to a figure of 700 or 800 million. Major General, by also, uh, uh, while I appreciate you going in so much detail to the fact that how it is in fact very advantageous for India to have now been coming up at this platform and also uh, raising voice on these issues and in fact uh, voicing about what it means for India. But you know, at this point of time, it is very important to see how India's crucial role into determining the peace in the conflict region of Palestine is concerned. As far as Prime, Minister's, uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi's meeting with the Palestinian president is concerned, this in fact was conveyed in a very detailed manner as we can understand, uh, also recalling that India was one of the top first countries uh, to recognize Palestine. He also conveyed India's continued support uh, to Palestine membership at the UN. But how far do you think is this conflict now uh, from, the, uh, from the time of getting resu uh, in a resolution? Because how far is it uh, for to be resolved? At this given point of time, India is in fact playing a role of a peacemaker where you know two uh, state solution is there in the pipeline or it is also being suggested to return to the dialogue and diplomacy but you know it this kind of a meeting in fact right now signals that how important india it is becoming as a nation in uh, these conflict regions where it is in fact debated about uh, there are very many sides of uh, when it comes to supporting these conflict regions General, excellent question raised by you. I must compliment you and the new Jakes for having touched or selected a very central theme in the world order today. Today, the world is totally polarized. Mm. It is militarized. And as we see, the conflict has actually you know, spread from Central Europe, from Ukraine to the Middle East, and from Middle East to the Red Sea and towards Indian Ocean, and going down towards the South China Sea in the Indo-Pacific. Under these circumstances, it is what we used to talk about, the price rise in fuel, food and fertilizer has actually started uh, impacting the day-to-day -day life of common people. The global south is the worst affected. And what I am trying to say, the global order is so polarized that there is no country worth its name in 21st century to listen to other countries' plea or the kind of... Uh, the, 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 the proposal that they are voting. India is the only country which is retaining its credibility and also um, the kind of uh, potential to extend its services to bring about peace. But peacemaking in today's world order, Simran, my personal view, is a very difficult subject in a complex environment, whether it is Ukraine or in the Middle East. Middle East, I would rate it is multiple times more complex than that of Ukraine. So therefore, what would it actually amount to is, firstly, Palestine you have touched upon. Yes, I totally agree. There is no solution other than two-nation theory as far as Palestine is concerned. I totally endorse and fully compliment NewsX to flag the issue, number one. Number two, what is the way forward to bring the conflict to a kind of a dialogue or, or to a diplomacy and dialogue onto the table? So. The stakeholders who are responsible is Israel, not only Israel alone, there are multiple stakeholders who are supporting, primarily I would say USA. So until USA puts its foot down and say Ki, enough is enough, now bring everything to an end, I don't think this conflict will come to an end. Hmm. However, however, having said that, my personal take on the issue, perhaps 5th November 2024, will bring about a change in the profile. If, if the Republicans come to power. Hmm. Perhaps Republicans have a different perspective and looking at the global order uh, with, a, uh, with a tinge of peace and harmony, not with the conflict. Democrats, they are very fond of continuing with the, the ongoing conflict, which I fear, whether it is Kamala Harris or anybody else from the Democrat, they would pitch for on continuity of the conflict in Ukraine and Israel. So my, my take on the whole issue is whoever comes in power, uh, in the U.S. in the forthcoming election will have a telling impact on the continuity or the ceasefire that we establish. India's role as a peacemaker uh, is going to pay dividend uh, provided the outcome of the elections of the USA comes in our favor. Last point, Simran, if you allow me, it's a noble initiative which India is saying, uh, taking. It is the only country which can bring East and West 
together mm. or you know bring north and south countries together it is the leader of the global south no doubt about it however we have enough problems in south country we need to focus how to resolve be it the manipur issue bengal west we know what is happening in the bangladesh we know that uh, chinese have come into the doklam plateau they are sitting there there is a extended stand up going on there is a revival of proxy war going on amidst all these kinds of situation with a strategic rivalry in the indian ocean chinese presence going up by the day i think we have enough to keep our you know attention and focus inside the country than to go out peace making but if that comes our way as a leader as a peace maker as a broker uh, kind like the china has been doing with the minimum cost benefit analysis or the cost that we have to pay i don't see any harm in india putting its best fo- fo- forward because it is the most acceptable country in today's time mm. uh, for any such kind of initiative being taken by our leadership back to you sir mm. all right there you have thank you major general sudhakar ji for speaking to news x and in fact breaking it down for our viewers on the strategic and the crucial in fact the significant importance of prime minister narendra modi's us visit for more such videos subscribe to the news x youtube channel hit the bell icon